Large syringes can also be used to determine the molar mass of the gases generated. In order to do that, we have a specially adapted or modified a syringe by boring a small hole through the plunger. This was done by heating a nail in a flame until it was pretty hot and then just pushing it through the uh, plunger. It melts right through. This nail is later used in the technique. In order to measure the mass of, the, of a gas that's generated and then determine the molar mass, this, tech, this syringe is weighed with and without the gas present. In order to weigh it, first of all, without the gas present, we'll put the latex cap on the syringe and then pull the plunger out while slipping the nail through that little hole. Joel here will assist. He's an undergraduate student at Creighton and uh, he'll slip the nail in the hole. This is really a, a two-person operation because one person pulls the plunger out and notice that he's inserting the nail so that it straddles the top of the barrel. Okay, now we go to the lab and determine the uh, mass of this syringe without any gas present on an analytical balance. Next, Joel will remove the nail. Plunger goes right back in to where it started. And then we take a, ga a, a gas-filled syringe. Any gas works. The heavier the gas, the better the results. So hydrogen gives the porous results. And we'll do a syringe-to-syringe -syringe transfer using a short length of latex tubing. I'll kind of squirt some of the Clean out the latex tube with some of the gas, providing it's not a noxious gas. And then transfer the gas to the molar mass syringe. Okay, the hole should be past the uh, top of the syringe barrel. We'll insert the nail, disconnect the syringe itself, and then push the plunger in so that the nail is seated across the top of the syringe barrel. Put the cap back on. Oops, must use the same cap that you weighed the first time. These caps have various masses. Weigh this again on the analytical balance, and then we've weighed the gas that's present by subtracting the two. So we know the mass of the gas. We know the volume of the gas. By the way, in order to determine the volume, you want to read from the bottom of the um, diaphragm, just where the rubber starts. You can read that to at least two significant figures, um, probably stretch it to three. And then you need the barometric pressure that day and the temperature that day, and, and very nice results can be determined using uh, this method.